Hi everybody, welcome to The Pen Habit. Glad to be back for another video, and today we're going to be talking about another one of my Italian beauties. Uh, I do love my Italian pens quite a bit, and this is a pen, again, from a new manufacturer. I've not had any of their pens before, so I was excited to give this one a try. It is the Montegrappa Espressione. Uh, so if you will... Uh, if you'll forgive me for my fake Italian accent here, here and there, it kind of sneaks out. And there's not a lot I can do about it. Let me walk you through the pen here. So the, the Montegrappa Espressione comes in this box. It's actually a, a nice little box. Um, but one of the interesting things is their pen coffins, as I call them, I don't know that that's the technical term, the pen boxes are actually kind of interesting. So, you know, normally you've got the coffin style box that opens up like this. There's actually is a, and I'll, switch over to the other cam here, but opens up like this. Uh, comes with a little booklet underneath, nice booklet with instructions, uh, and then two little Montegrappa cartridges. They look like short standard international cartridges. And then here is the pen. Now this is, I have got no problem in saying, a very, very pretty pen. It's just got this really lovely blue resin. And it's got a lot of depth and shimmer and pearlescence. I mean, this is really quite an attractive barrel material here. Very smoothly polished. So let me walk you through the pen. From the top, we've got a, a blue jewel of that same resin. Uh, I believe it's rhodium plated trim. I'd have to double check on that. It says Montegrappa right across the top here. Um, the clip is interesting in that it has, a, you can see it here on the profile, it has a little roller on it. Instead of having a, a ball at the end, it's got a little roller. It's quite a stiff clip, um, and there's not a lot of clearance here, so um, that's something to be aware of. They have this kind of Greek columnar design here with the, the faceted edges, which is nice because it keeps the pen from rolling around at all, as long as the cap is attached. And then one of the interesting, well, before we get there, the another little silver band in the barrel down here and then a threaded cap with another end jewel on it and it's not really a jewel just a little insert but um one of the interesting things about this pen is that the cap is meant to be screwed on at the end uh, which is very similar to a couple of other pens i've looked at recently i don't know if this is a a trend it's not something i see a lot in pens but i've seen a lot recently in pens um, and that's actually going to be pretty important when I get to the specs. Um, I'll, I'll explain that in just a little bit, but, uh, you've got a, uh, silver plated or rhodium plated nib that says Montegrappa with an M for medium and a metal section. You can see that the section, there's a, a fairly big step up between the threads here, which are in metal and uh, they're not sharp at all so that's not a problem but there is a pretty big step up here between the section and the barrel uh, it's a cartridge converter filler comes with a converter uh, Montegrappa branded but again standard international same sort of thing you'd find in a lot of pens so um, the specs on the pen so uncapped the the pen is a relatively svelte 120 millimeters with the cap on it is 137.4 millimeters and posted it is 174 millimeters which is a little long but it is pretty well balanced when posted now for me this is one of those pens that i have to post because it it's it's only 120 millimeters so it's a little on the small side uh, especially if I want to extend my fingers, it starts to get caught in the web of my thumb here. Um, the other thing with this pen is the nib is not a terribly large nib for a pen of this size. So uh, I find that I have to hold the pen up on the barrel. And if I do that, then it is certainly too small for my hand. So this is one pen where if I hold the pen up on the barrel, which works pretty well in, in this particular case, then, um, then the posting, it, it really doesn't feel as long because there's more, more length underneath the grip. Um, in terms of diameters, it is about nine millimeter section. So it's a pretty narrow section, narrower than I like, generally speaking. The barrel is 13 millimeters, which is about the same width as the, the grip on a Mont Blanc 149. And the cap is 
just slightly above that at one at 13.5 millimeters. And then it is also a fairly heavy pen. So it's 28 grams uncapped and 40 grams with the cap on. Um, so a couple things about this pen. The nib is a stainless steel nib, which uh, is a little strange considering the price of this pen. Usually pens in this price range tend to come with a gold nib. This one comes with a steel nib. The, the nib is quite smooth, but this is a medium nib, and I'll show you in the writing sample. This does not write like a medium. Uh, I did have to do just a tiny bit of smoothing to the nib. It wasn't bad. It was just giving me just a touch more feedback than I generally like. The nib is not, I, I wouldn't say it glides, um, but it, it is smooth and you get just a hint of feedback, which depending on the way you like to write and the paper, that might actually be a good thing. I, I've, I've enjoyed writing with this pen quite a bit. It's quite comfortable, or it, the, the feel of the nib on the paper is quite nice. What I don't care for on this pen is the grip. Uh, you know, I, on a pen this size, I would have liked to have seen a number six size nib or a slightly larger nib. This looks about like a number five nib. Um, it's a little smaller than I like. And with the way I hold my pen, you can see here on the close up cam, if I grip the pen, I'll try to turn this sideways here and hold it against the paper, I actually have to tilt the pen forward to get it to touch the paper. Whereas, you know, or, or I can grasp it on the barrel because the nib is, is so short and the section is fairly short as well. And because of this step up, I find that I'm often gripping the pen right on the step up, which I really don't care for. Uh, I would have loved for this pen to be about, I'd say, five to eight millimeters longer without the cap on, so I wouldn't have to post it. Um, and then a slightly larger nib would also be nice. But all of that being said, Man, oh man, this is just a stunner of a pen. It is, I, I was, had this pen with me at work and uh, pulled it out, started writing, and, and once again, the guy sitting next to me goes, wow, that's really beautiful. And it is, this material, I have not really seen anything quite like it out on the market. It's just a bright, vibrant, pearlescent, shimmery blue with a lot of depth to it. And it's hard to, to capture in video or photo how rich this pen is. It feels wonderful in the hand. It's very nicely finished. And uh, they really have done a good job on the fit and finish of this pen. So this is the Montegrappa Espressione. Let me go ahead and do a writing sample, show you what it's all about, and we'll wrap up. All right, here we go. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and post the pen so it will be a little bit more comfortable for my grip. This is the Montegrappa Espressione. And we are using a steel, I'm gonna put it in quotes, medium nib. This nib writes like a fine. It writes like a fine fine. It does not write like a medium at all. And that's even with me having expanded uh, the, the ink flow a little bit and widened the tines just a touch. It, this is not a medium, regardless of what the nib actually says. So be, just be aware of that when you're buying this pen. Uh, the ink for today is Graf von Faber Castell Hazelnut brown all right and of course rhodia dot pad for the paper so here is our little quote DGE 
And this is by our good friend, Mr. Albert Einstein. E-I-N. My goodness. Spelling. So I'm not going to move my, I haven't moved my hand from where I'm writing. And you'll notice just in order to get the nib to the paper at the right length for me, my hands are right on the threads, which makes this pen not the most comfortable for my hands. If I had slightly smaller hands or slightly larger hands, I suspect this would be comfortable because I could hold it nicely up here or I could hold it nicely down here. But as it is, the distance from the tip of the nib to where I hold the pen, it, it just winds up right on the threads. And I can't use this pen for long se writing sessions because of that. So um, just be aware that you know, and I should, I feel like I ought to put my hand measurements up on my website just so you can compare your hands to mine. But if you've got smaller hands, I think this would be a pen you would really, really enjoy using. The other thing I'll point out is that with the metal section, you are going to get fingerprints here. So if that's, if you're the kind of person who's bothered by that, I am not one of those people. Uh, you want to be aware of it. I use an old cut up white cotton t-shirt to to clean the nibs and stuff of my pen. So I always have one around. I'll just wipe off the section if it's starting to look a little gunky. All right. So in terms of writing here, we've got, you'll see it's pretty consistent. And this is that part of the video where I should zoom in. Okay. So you can see, like I said, it's very consistent. This It's just a smooth, smooth flow. Now there is not much in the way of give in this pen. It's uh it's not quite a nail, but it's pretty darn close. There's just not much give. You could you could spring this nib pretty easily, I, or, I suspect, or or damage it if you tried to push too hard. It, it's it's pretty stiff, so don't expect a lot of flex out of this stainless steel nib. If it is a standard number five, and I don't know that it is, it might be possible to swap it out with a different nib. But, uh, but yeah, I just don't know off the top of my head if this is is a standard number five or not. Um, in terms of wetness. I would consider it to be moderately wet. Um, it it certainly helps the flow across the page. And when I have been able to force myself to write with it for long stretches and just, you know, deal with having my hand right on the threads, uh, I will say the feed has done a, a really quite a nice job of keeping up with my writing because I do write fairly quickly and I have some pens where the feeds just can't keep up with what I'm writing. That is not the problem here. Um, so overall, this is a beautiful pen that's very, very well made that I really would like a lot if the size of my hand was slightly different. And this is a pen I did actually try out in the store, but I didn't realize it wasn't going to work for my grip until I got home and actually used it for 30 minutes. And then I was like, oh, oh, this is going to be a problem, I think. Um, but I think for the right hand, this pen is a beautiful addition. And I have to say, this material is really spectacular. It's it's the, That's the one thing I will say about Italian pens. And one of the reasons why I like them as much as I do, they make their pens out of spectacular materials. Their pens look incredible. You know, I look at Viscont, my Visconti Homo sapiens or my Visconti uh, Salvador Dali or Vincent van Gogh. Um, the I have a, an Omas Bologna, a Stipula Etruria. All of these are Italian pens, and all of them are made with, with materials you just don't see in other pen makers. They actually go out of their way to consider the aesthetics of the, aesthetics of the pen. So that's one of the reasons why I love the Italian pens. I, I wish I could love this pen because I love the way it looks. It just doesn't fit my hand. It's one of those things where it's a nice pen and I like it, but there's just that something, that that special thing that if you're using fountain pens, doesn't click for me, but it might be amazing for you. Uh, I, I do wish it was a little bit larger. I need to see if they have other pens that are slightly larger and will fit my hand better because I like the nib on this a lot. I love the material. So if I could find the same sort of pen in a slightly larger size, I'd be all over that. So if you have any questions, as always, please leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel or like the video and uh, reach out to me on all the social media haunts. And also, as I say every time as well, don't forget to head over to penhabit.com and uh, see the rest of the photos of this stunner of a pen. And we will see you here next time on The Pen Habit. Thank you for watching.